I got a really weird Nintendo Switch case that I want to share with you. This is something that Brad figured out. So if I get anything wrong, Brad's going to jump in and correct me. So here's the deal with this Switch. It works. You can turn it on and see the display. You could play a game. Everything's fine except for when you put it in the dock. So when you put these things in the dock, the dock is connected via HDMI to a monitor that I have right here. Here's my monitor. So I should be able to take my working switch, here's my screen, slide it into this dock and see my switch image go through HDMI and appear on my TV. And when I plug it in via its USB-C charge port down there, it goes dark, which that's good, that's working. And it should mean that my HDMI image should appear over here on my TV. So this is the same TV that's hooked up to this dock right here at the HDMI out. But I don't see anything, so I have no image, no HDMI out, even though this switch is charging here in the dock. So what is up with that? What a weird problem. Let's dive in. I'm going to take this out and I'm going to show you. Oh, God, that thing. <laughs> Fan's buzzing. Don't touch the fan. Oh. Ah. All right, I'm going to show you exactly what's going on with this very weird problem and how to fix it. We're going to start by looking at the actual charge port. Now this switch can charge. And how do we know that? Because when we connect it to a USB-C ammeter, we see normal charging current. Plus, you can use it and see that it's charging and play it. Now, when Brad first took this case out, he noticed that the native charge port, which he's now replaced, was a little bit mangled. Brad was looking at these little guys. One, two, three, four, five. And it turns out that our culprit is right here. How do we know? And what are those things? What do they do? Those things are called data chokes. And it's like having two ferrite bead filters together in one little square package. How do we know that? Because we've seen these before. In fact, they're really commonly associated with image lines in other devices. Here's an example. I've got an iPhone 6 Plus right here. Now the 6 Plus has a schematic that fell off a truck in China, so we know a lot about it. And if we look up on the schematic, what are these same little square guys? What do they do? Let's zoom in so you can see. These are the same component at least as far as they look. Maybe slight variations in the actual specs, but these are pretty much the same. Now, if we look these guys up on a schematic, we can see what do they actually do. So let's jump in and get a hint from the iPhone 6 Plus schematic. And if we look at this, we can see that there's power and there's data for image. Now let's look at those data lines in particular. I'm gonna to try to zoom in. So right here we can see AP to LCM, MIPI clock, NNP, there's another one, data one, data zero. So if we follow those lines from the connector and we see where do they go, right on the same page of the schematic, we can follow them right over here. And here they are again, AP to LCM, MIPI clock, connector, P and N. And we can see that those sets of image data lines, they come from the CPU to the screen connector in the iPhone 6 Plus through this guy, L2044. And if we drew a square around that guy, that would be one of those square little data chokes. Here's another one, L2043, L2042, and they're all doing the same thing. They are a little drawbridge a filter that the signal of the image data travels through to actually get to the screen. So if something happened to any one of these data chokes, let's say some type of you plugged in something wrong and you created a temporary short to ground, what might happen? You could actually blow up the data choke just like a fuse or a circuit breaker. Or if you knocked one off, got water damage, anything that damages one of these data chokes is gonna create a broken open line. 
that's a problem, which means that your image data can't get all the way to the screen. So is that what's actually going on here on the switch? We're just guessing, right? From experience with the 6 Plus and these data chokes, looks like a really similar component in a very similar fault, right? We have no image from the charge port. So how can we use the multimeter to ask, are these data chokes okay? Well, a data choke should have continuity from one side to the other. Even better if we could measure continuity through the data choke, you know, from the connector to somewhere over there. But at the very least, let's grab our multimeter and just ask, do we have continuity through each of what we think are data chokes on the switch? There's input going. Here we are back on the switchboard. Now, what led Brad to this set of little data chokes here? Why? What, what do these even have to do with signaling through the charge board? Because when we look at the charge board, it, they're not connected. We don't see a line there. Well, it's because of this chip here. So we know from experience that this chip, which if you look really close at the letters on it, it says PI3. So the Pi chip, so the PI3 chip, we know that this has to do with image through the charge port. So before just saying, let's replace that chip, which is a common fault, we decided to measure around, to test, to see, is there a short or something like that in one of these related components that are nearby? That's what led us to take a look here at the data chokes. So here's how to use your multimeter to actually measure those. So we'll just put this in straight up continuity mode. So continuity mode, continuity mode on your good old multimeter means that if you have low resistance between the two probes, you'll hear a beep. So hopefully you can hear that beep. Now let's dive in. So if we go to this healthy looking one and we measure on both sides, beep. And if we go here, beep. And we can even read the board, for example, from A, not just B, but all the way out here and get a beep, right? So we can actually measure through these data chokes. So we're getting a beep on each one of these. No beep, no beep. Even though there's nothing that inherently like looks wrong, it doesn't look burned up, it doesn't look missing it looks the same as the other guys. There is internal damage. This guy is broken open inside. And so as a result, we know that we have no signal from whatever important line is on the bottom side. It does not go through to the chip. So perhaps the chip is the source and the chip's output can't cross through this guy, or maybe there's input going into the chip, probably output. This guy is open and that's a problem. So what are we going to do about that problem? We have to close the open in order to try to figure out if that's even going to solve. How do we do that? We need to get a replacement. Well, we looked around on different donor boards for other Nintendo switches and guess what? On some of the switches, this component is no stuff, meaning it's intentionally left off. So not, every switch uses this image data line. So I'm going to say that again. Not every version of Nintendo Switch uses this fifth data choke. So if yours doesn't have it and never had it because it has factory solder on the pads, don't put one on there. It's no stuff. If yours is knocked off or it's there and doesn't have continuity, that's the signal that you need to replace it. So where are we going to get a replacement one from? I decided to just take a stab at something that we know has a very similar function. Let's use the iPhone 6 Plus data choke. So I'm going to swap this one out with an iPhone 6 data choke. See what happens. Oh, all right. OK. I just asked Brad, is that what you did? He said, no. So we'll find out. This is what I'm going to do. We'll okay. see. If, if the specs don't exactly match, I mean, what are we going to do? We'll probably have something that flickers or gives us some static. I like that. So Brad's saying, well, what if you pick one that's not quite the exact match? What would happen? You would probably have something that had flickers or static or a little bit of a wavy image. 
So we're going to take this right off and make puffy pillows. Now I'm going to go grab one right off of that six, six plus. It's funny that this, the, the reason why I have so many of these so red is that this is a project that we actually use in practical board repair school of how to manipulate tiny dudes, the mechanics of how to take one of these off and put one on with hot air or the mini hot tweezers. Now it is important to line these up. So they're not squares, they're rectangles. So they're, you can kind of think of it as a little brick with two tunnels. And you have to have the tunnels lined up so that the line goes through the tunnel. So let's spend a minute and make sure that we get that alignment right. That looks good. All right, let's test with a multimeter to see have we restored continuity through that line? Did we close it? So I'm going to measure from the pad on one side. I'm going to measure all the way up to the chip. And I've got a beep. And on the other pad, does it go all the way through? Nope, something's wrong. This is why the multimeter is always king. It looks like it's on there fine, but it must not be. So if it's still open, then we have to figure out why. So we're going to look on an angle and try to find out, is that filter not quite soldered on there or is it you know, damaged from lifting it from one to another? Do we need to get another one? Let's go find out. All right, so I'm just gonna check to see, is it just not quite soldered on? This pad, I think, looks a little red to me. So that's like, I'm gonna lift it off and find out. Look at his bottom feet. Oh, he's got broken bottom feet. So I want to see on the bottom of these guys, four shiny feet. And I only see two shiny feet. So I'm going to toss him and get his brother. You know what? This was probably a bad one. I took this board from the pile of student boards. Um, and we do, like I said, it is a project at Practical Board Repair School. So that one might not have yeah that one this one's so much more uh difficult to get off i see what happened now there we go four shiny feet not gonna have a problem going on so let's stick them on It is pretty funny, like, because uh, like the board that I picked has three or four exposed chokes, so that means like they've been off and on, and somebody was like, nope, I got to go get another one. I have a feeling that might happen. Do we have continuity now to the pin? Yes, and yes. All right, that guy's on there. Now you can say, well, you know, he's really not straightened up. Who cares? Electrically, he's on there, and that's what matters. And we don't want to keep touching him and heating him up. You could put hot air on him and kind of float him right into place, but there's no need. Electrically, our multimeter can't lie, and it says you have continuity through that guy. So let's go ahead and stick this board back in the switch and see right, if it solves so our problem. It's back in the switch housing, turned on. So now I'm just going to slide it into the dock. And here it is. Now we have our external display again. 
Way to go. I thought this was such a cool problem and one that you're really not going to see because that data choke wasn't burned. It just didn't have continuity through it. So that, that's how you fix that. If you want to come and learn how to figure out all this stuff, learn how to use your multimeter and fix all kinds of things, then join us at Practical Board Repair School. You can find the details on iPadRehab.com and we'd love to see you here in class.